Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Visual Note Taking. My name is Wes Fryer. I'm so happy to be here. My wife and I were supposed to arrive at 9.30 yesterday morning, and our Oklahoma City flight was canceled. And so the, the next flight took off at like 3.10. But it went through Las Vegas and San Diego oh, to get here. The good news is we didn't have to worry about missing the flight because we were on the flight to All Tucson. Right. But we got in about 10 o'clock last night. So really excited to be here. I love mobile learning. I love Tony Vincent. I love the Arizona K-12 Center. I've had opportunities to go to a lot of conferences in a lot of places. And I can tell you with 100% integrity the way this conference is organized, also the Camp Plug and Play, uh, Miami Device, which is Felix Giacomino's conference, such good learning opportunities. I just love how it's structured. And I was so guilty being here last time without my wife, and now she's here. So we're going to do a session next uh, talking about iPad books and video. But we're going to talk about visual note taking. And I have a uh, QR code if you want to scan it. Or you can simply go to the website, Show With Media. Showwithmedia.com is the new home for a project I've been working on over four years. And one of the 12 products there is visual note taking, which some people will call sketch notes. And so I have a slide share, which I'd actually prepared in March for the NC Ties Conference in North Carolina. And so I will go through some of these slides because... The best thing to do today for visual note taking would be to practice. And so I'm going to encourage you right now to grab a pit, pardon me, and a piece of paper or grab a device um, that will allow you to draw. And we're going to practice visual note taking because it is important to talk about the why. And I really do believe that we can't make assumptions, like we just assume things. Everyone comes from different places, we have different experiences. In fact, let's do a little survey just by hand. We won't do this no, technologically. But how many of you consider yourself to be um, a visual artist? You really enjoy drawing, you like to sketch, you, that's part of your identity, okay? So we have three of us. How many of us um, are not so sure about our drawing skills, okay? Now, if we were to ask a group of first graders or kindergartners the same question, all the hands go up. But as we move up the educational food chain and grades and all this, somehow drawing and sketching becomes something we don't do anymore because real notes don't look like that. And the, and the main thing I want to try and persuade you of today is that visual note-taking is hard. It's hard, not because of the drawing, but because of the cognitive demands that it puts on you as a learner. When you have to translate something into another language, yo puedo hablar español un poquito. I can talk a little Spanish, okay? But still, if we're getting in a conversation, I'm really attending to you and your accent, and I'm working, man. I am not, it's not like talking English. I'm having to work at it. And similarly, when we convert ideas into visuals, it's not a passive process. So this website has links to a variety of different examples and videos, my favorite TED Talk kind of of all time. I did ask them for two projectors, and it's not exactly perfect. It's over here on the wall. Um, but we're going to practice some visual note taking today with uh, just one of the neatest videos I've ever seen talking about the Coriolis effect. I've been teaching STEM to fourth and fifth graders the last two years in Yukon, Oklahoma, and we do something called curiosity links at least once a week, which are just cool links, a lot of times videos about stuff. Again, assumptions. When I show kids a video, I have naively assumed, oh, they're learning. They're absorbing. Maybe so, maybe not. There's a difference in engagement and being enthralled. The root of enthrall is the Greek word thrall, which means slave. Okay? So if I'm enthralled, and Tony can give a very enthralling as well as engaging presentation, but just being captivated watching something is different than being actively engaged and processing and making sense of and owning and getting it to be sticky. So um, I'm going to skip to a slide. 
uh, in this presentation, and I'm going to go through these, but I'm going to, I'm going to try, if I can, and just skip to the slide of apps, because here we are at mobile learning, you're interested in apps. What about the apps? Well, there are some very good apps, and, and uh, we'll practice some of these, or we'll practice with some of these. My favorite uh, app is uh, that, that I pay for is Procreate. Why do I like Procreate so much? Because it exports as a video the whole thing, just like brushes used to. And so it shows all the steps of how you've drawn things. But I'm a classroom teacher, and I like free, because guess what? We don't have a big app budget. So Forge, F-O-R-G-E, that's from the folks that um, have the Adonit um, stylus, which is a, a stylus I really like. That's my favorite free. I, I, I like brushes, but it's went open source, and it actually got worse. It's one of the only apps I think that's gotten worse in its later version than earlier. And paper is okay, but, uh, you know, the stylus is like 70 bucks, and um, I don't know. It's, I, 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 like, I like Procreate and Forge. So I think what I'd like to do is actually just, just jump into having you draw, and then we'll go through some slides and talk a little bit about the why. One of the tips that I'm going to show, uh, share in the presentation is when we're doing visual notes, it's a good idea to use a familiar medium. Because if you're using an app for the first time, you're going to be focused on how does the app work instead of visual notes. So what I'm going to encourage us to do for this activity, it just may be that you've got a pen and a piece of paper on the table and you're going to, you're going to draw with that. Because... What I want you to try to do is, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this too, like, and I am not an artist, okay? My last art class was in seventh grade. I feel very conspicuous, you know, doing art. However, it's kind of like I do my own tricks. Uh, when I did the mapping media, well, it's called mapping media, now it's called show with media. I did my own drawings, all right? I had my, or I paid my, my youngest daughter to draw my art for my first book, playing with media. But for this, I said, well, I'm going to just go ahead and sketch these. And so I guess this is with an exception, because I was not still feeling confident. The visual notes in the center of that are by Julia Forsyth, who is a Canadian educator that lives in Niagara. Um, but anyway, what, what I want you to try to do with this activity is you're just going to try and draw the main ideas, OK? So where does this come from? Well, my. STEM website. I've been teaching fourth and fifth grade STEM the last two years full time in Yukon, Oklahoma. We claim Garth Brooks, but he lives in Tulsa now, but he's back on the road and he's doing concerts again. <laughs> Yay, Bert. Um, is this website, stem.westfriar.com. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is because uh, my cur the curiosity links are here. And I really think this is an idea that all of us can do no matter what grade um, or, or subject we teach. There are, there are lots of amazing videos and amazing articles and things coming out that we can write about, that we can engage about, we can discuss, and we can highlight for students. And so I literally have my students you know, time me and try to not do this more than 10 minutes. Because I can like, talk about this all day. The Tesla power wall, and, you know, um, gosh, landing the, the, the uh, European Space Agency, landing on the asteroid. There's just all this stuff. So... Uh, we did a, a camp with teachers two weeks ago called STEM Seeds, and I shared this video called The Truth About Toilet Swirl, all right? Now, this is from two different channels, Smarter Every Day and, uh, how do I say it, Veroticeum? Uh And actually, the, the Veroticeum guy is going to be one of the keynoters at Miami Device. What these videos were created to do was explain the Coriolis effect. Uh, now, let's do this as a little nice activity, right? We do a... A KWL, so let's just say, okay, what do you know? I'm going to set a timer, and I'm going to, this is online-stopwatch.com. It's free, it doesn't require anything special other than a browser, okay? I'm going to count down. I'm going to give you 90 seconds to do the following. I want you to introduce yourself, okay? And if you're by yourself, I'll come talk to you. But if you see anybody else beside them, you know, themselves, pull them in. Don't leave anybody to be alone. I want you to just tell a little bit about who you are, what you do professionally. And then I want you to talk about the Coriolis effect, <laughs> okay? What do you know about the Coriolis effect? I bet we probably have some people that know a lot about it. We probably have some folks that don't know anything about it. So, and hey, you, someone who gets to talk to Tony because he just walked in. I'm so honored. There he is. I just admitted to them that I love you so. That you oh. <laughs> and this is such a great, such a great conference. Um, so introduce yourself. 
and talk about the Coriolis effect. And then we're gonna watch these videos and do some visual notes on them. Okay, go. Good morning. Hi. Okay. My wife teaches third and fourth grade, and she talks about the same thing too. Her kids there in Oklahoma City, and they are all at her school, private school. So they're from kindergarten to fifth grade, and third and fourth grade. There's a lot of knowledge that they have in their face. Visuals is how they express themselves a lot more than written. I'm not saying that I can help work on the way, but the visuals can be a way to express themselves. Okay. So, anybody have someone they talk with who is pretty good on the Coriolis effect? Right here. Right here. All right. All right. So you've been you've been volunteered. Tell us about the Coriolis effect. I volunteered her. You volunteered, yes, you went voluntold. That's okay. <laughs> no, I'm moving the voice to first. Um, it's a it's a when an object appears to be follow a curved path, even when it's not necessarily a curved path. Okay. So for right. example, I teach earth science and winds appear to curve because of the rotation of the earth, but they don't actually curve, they just appear to be curved. Okay. So rotation is causing linear things to look curved. Appear curved. Okay. Anybody else have a thought about the Coriolis effect? We have a NASA shirt right there. Do we have some good Coriolis effect knowledge? None. So, so I majored in geography in college, and I love geography. Uh, but I will admit to you, and I know this had to do with the spin of like storms. And I've thought I've heard about toilets and sinks and things like that too. That they're different. But, you know, not a lot of knowledge. And then this is something certainly in our standards, you know, teaching earth science certainly is. Um, so let's give this a try. So I have brought up both of these videos so that they're synchronized. And I'll, we did this at our, at our workshop, and, and hopefully I, we can pull this off. Um, I'll push play here, and I'll push play here. And they've made these videos so they can, um, you know, they can play simultaneously just like this. Here's your task, okay? This is going to be about eight minutes, seven minutes, eight minutes, something like that. I want you to take visual notes. And I haven't even been through my slide deck, but the short of visual notes are visually represent key ideas, okay? This isn't about let me capture everything. This is about the big ideas and try and sketch. This isn't about how good you can draw. This is about translating a concept into something visual. Now, you can use words. There are really not any rules, OK? And if you want to write down words, and I do too in my visual notes, uh, that, is, that is fine. Um, I, and I think I have, well, let, let me do this. On the, on the Show With Media site, when we go to visual note taking, each one of these has the definition, the videos in some cases, a workflow, tools you can use, and then my favorite part, the examples, okay? So I'll disclose here, visual notes. I have a little Flickr, maybe? Um, Flickr set that I uh, have uh, of, of making visual notes. And it's good for me to give this presentation because it challenges me to, <laughs> to do this. There was one of my first ones at ISTE. I'm really proud of that. I worked on that one later. That was Stephen Johnson, Where Do Good Ideas Come From? You can see there are a lot of words in here. There's also sketches. A great tip for visual notes, if you're doing it on a device like an iPad, is sketch in black and go in later with color. 
right? You won't have time to make things really fancy in this moment. But try and sketch symbols, try and, and draw icons. Here's another, uh, I think, pretty good tip that's helped me. Um, if you're not sure what to draw, um, I use iconarchive.com. There's also one icon finder. And so, man, I don't know how to draw an ebook. So let's type an ebook. Why is this better than Google Images? Because they're simple, right? An icon is simple. And I totally stole this from Kevin Honeycutt, who is a true visual artist. And he, and he talks about teaching kids how to draw. Well, we copy what other people have done, and we can look at examples of what other folks have drawn. And icons, because they're simplified, you know, can be a, a way to think about representing. So the hard, maybe the hardest thing about today is I don't want you to feel intimidated. I don't want you to be fearful. Put fear aside, okay? Seriously, this is just for you. This isn't for, hey, I'm going to need to show this to the world. Hey, you know, Wes is going to come judge me and be all mean when I, you know, do something that looks like a stick man. Hey, I draw stick figures. It's like Pictionary, right? What is the goal in Pictionary? To create compelling art that we can hang on the wall, right? No. <laughs> it's to communicate. It's to get an idea across, in that case, to someone else. But with visual note-taking, it's for you, okay? So do you may have a question before we, we share the videos? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open up on my iPad, and I know this is kind of on the side, but I'm going to open up the, um, the Forge app, I guess, because this is, this is a free one, and um, I'm going to uh, create a new, a new drawing and uh, be creating. I, I, I'm using my, my Paper 53 pencil, but it's not a Paper 53, so it's just using a stylus. If you have a stylus, it's nice, but you don't have to have one. Does anybody have a question about what I'd like for you to do? You would rather we use a tool that we're used to using than try a new tool. Yeah, but it's up to you. I mean, this may be your opportunity to give that app a try. So I'm not going to you know, be upset, but that is something I've heard people recommend when we're, and, and when you're working with kids, visual note-taking. I just get out the, the uh, colored pencils and, and the paper. You know, because let's not be distracted by, wait a minute, how do I change the color? i got to make my pen thicker. I don't like that brush stroke, okay? Let's have those conversations later. Let's just talk about the ideas. Because really, isn't that the point of technology? It's not, let me talk about the technology. Let me talk about the ideas. I want to use this tool. So good question. Any other questions? Okay. We will not make you share what you have done, okay? If you want to share, you can share. Uh, but what we will do when we're finished is spend some time at our tables talking about key ideas. And we'll have our visual notes out and we'll see you know, what other people got as far as key ideas and how other people represented some of those things. Okay, are we ready? All right, here we go. I'm gonna try to hit play here and then play here. <laughs> In Sydney, Australia, we are at 34 degrees south latitude, which is the opposite side of the world from Huntsville, Alabama. So, which way did the toilet flush? That's the question. Here in Huntsville, Alabama, we're at 34 degrees north latitude. And we're going to find out if the water swirls the opposite way here to how it does in the southern hemisphere. We're making the definitive video to settle this once and for all. It's never been done on the internet. The Simpsons did a whole episode based on toilets flushing the opposite direction in Australia. Plus, other shows have supposedly demonstrated this effect. So, I've seen documentaries that seem to indicate that which hemisphere you're in determines which way the water is going to swirl. But there's this other group of people, and they seem really confident that it doesn't matter where you're at, the water's going to swirl however it wants. So, is this a real effect or not? The application of this principle to draining water in Earth's two hemispheres is just funk. But if you were just looking for yourself and figured out which way your toilet swirls, if you try it yourself, you'll find inconsistent results. In Alabama, I've noticed that some turn counterclockwise and some go clockwise. This sink sometimes drains one way and sometimes the other way. You see, most toilets have little jets in it, so the swirl direction is determined by the design of the toilet and not which hemisphere you're in. In any container of water, there's always going to be some rotation. The water is not perfectly still. And it is this, rather than the hemisphere, that determines which way the water will swirl down the drain. So it's a myth. Crossing the equator does not mean the toilet's going to change directions. But what if we come into the garage and do a more controlled experiment? But what if we could eliminate all motion from the water? This is a one and a half meter kitty. I have here a five foot wide kitty pool. 
Instead of filling the pool with no vorticity at all, I'm going against the way it's supposed to drain. So I'm trying to fill it with the flow going clockwise. I actually fill the pool in the anti-clockwise direction to be sure that any clockwise motion we see is not due to the way I fill the pool. So let's let the water settle for a complete day so that we know that it's perfectly still. And I've left this water sitting here for 24 hours. So it seems like I've damped all of the motions from the filling. Well, I'm not going to reach in and pull a plug out because that would induce some vorticity. I'm going to use this valve that I have connected to the bottom of the pool. I really hope this works. Destin, wish me luck. Good luck, Derek. I'm about to pull the plug. Okay, opening the valve three, in three, two, two, one, one. Why should be blowing? And the pool is draining. But you can't see any motion of the water just yet. Okay, water's been flowing for a couple of minutes, and I haven't seen anything yet, so we're going to put some dye in it. To help us see where the water's flowing, I'm going to put some food coloring in on the four cardinal directions around the pool. Check it out, it's like a tornado, like right off the bat. we got a counterclockwise rotation. We filled it up clockwise, and now it's going counterclockwise. You can clearly see that the water is flowing clockwise in this direction, and that makes sense because that's how it should flow in the southern hemisphere due to the Earth's rotation. We have a kiddie pool in my garage, and the whole Earth is rotating, and the water is going counterclockwise because I'm in the northern hemisphere. It's real. This is real. But you can see what a tiny little effect it is, and what extraordinary lengths I had to go to to see this effect. So really, you're not going to see it in a bathtub, and you're not going to see it in a sink or in a toilet, because there are other sources of annual momentum that totally wash out this effect. We just proved it because we just eliminated very The Coriolis effect is happens. real. It works. To understand how it works, imagine a pool with one edge touching the south pole. Think about a pool near the North Pole. The pool is stationary relative to Earth, but every day it's actually completing one pole revolution. The Earth is spinning on its axis, so the pool spins around the pole once a day. Now you can see the side of the pool furthest from the pole travels much farther every day than the side right next to the pole. The whole pool is moving, but the part that's closest to the equator has more momentum and the part that's closest to the pole has less. So the outer side of the pool is moving fastest towards the east, and as you get closer to the pole, the velocity decreases down to zero. Think about these velocities relative to the drain in the middle. Now, imagine we drain the pool. When we pull the plug, all the water starts moving towards the middle. Water from the far side is moving too fast relative to the drain, and so it gets out ahead, whereas water from near the pole is going too slow, and so it lags behind. The side nearest the equator is going faster, so that water outruns the drain. But the water nearest the pole is going slower, so it falls behind. So when the water, so the water the approaches the drain, the drain it swirls counterclockwise. This is the reason hurricanes swirl counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere, and this is the reason cyclones swirl clockwise in the southern hemisphere. The center of the hurricane has lower pressure, just like a drain. So the hurricane swirls just like our pool. The higher pressure air rushes into the eye of the storm, and just like in our pool, swirls in the direction dictated by the hemisphere. And that's and the that truth, the about, truth about, about toilet swirl. That was awesome. What did I definitely learned something. And if you did too, then you should share these videos with your friends. It's the first internet experiment from two different locations. Pretty cool so, stuff. But so, you should subscribe to this guy. Subscribe yep. to that. Run over there. Subscribe to Derek. I'm gonna actually go to his channel and make sure that you end up over there. Let's go. Let's go to Bear Cassie and Bandit. Okay. Subscribe. Let's go. Okay. Yep. Yeah, you're here. <laughs> Oh, hey, these are some of my subscribers. I am so glad to see you here. While you're here, subscribe to this. That's what we're going to do. We're going to subscribe to Veritasium and Mass because it's an awesome channel. This is a good looking channel. I like the logo. <laughs> I like what you got going on. Oh, look. Where's the subscribe button? <laughs> okay, okay, seriously, so you can to the collaborative episode of Smarter Every Day. I want to thank 100% Derek Muller, Dr. Derek Muller of Veritasium. Thank you, this. No, so here's the deal. Seriously, we came up with this. Three years ago, no lie, no lie. Three years ago at YouTube headquarters, we decided we were going to collaborate. Derek did his version almost immediately. Two years, ago. two years ago. So it only took him a year. It took me. <coughs> Derek basically had to fly to Alabama to help me do it. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't come here, this is never going to get done. All right, so Derek flew to Alabama, and we here we are preparing 
it's cool and middle of the night. So, what I'm trying to tell you is, I want you to go to Derek's channel and subscribe. This is a very hard push. Go to Veritasium, subscribe to Veritasium. He has all kinds of physics stuff. It's really cool. You will enjoy it. I'm telling you that right now. We've been friends for a really long time. Our channels are about the same size. Just, you should be subscribed to Veritasium. So, I will suggest that to you now. Just click on Derek. Click on my face. Click on his face and do that. <laughs> and you ready to drain this pool? Let's drain this pool. I think it's been three years. I'm three years drain this pool. <laughs> Go subscribe to Veritasium. I'm Destin. You get smarter every day. Have it. Good day again. Destin has made some of the best videos on the internet, like a backwards bicycle, Prince Rupert's drop, and what it looks like to get a tattoo in slow motion. Now, I've been friends with Destin for about three years, and I'm pretty much convinced that the man is superhuman. Not only does he run a remarkably successful YouTube channel, he also has a wife and four kids, and he has a full-time job. The man is literally a rocket scientist. And he's friends with astronauts, and when he asks them questions, they answer him from space. You are getting smarter every day. This man deserves your subscription. If you're not subscribed to him already, I don't know what you've been doing with your life, but go over to his channel right now and subscribe to Smarter Every Day, and trust me, you will thank me later. And I want to thank you for watching. You know, we have been working on this collaboration for about three years, and it feels so good to have it finally out there in the world. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed making it. All right, I'll see you next time. Okay. Wow, pretty fun. So, here's our task. I'm gonna bring up our little stopwatch again. This time I'm gonna give you two minutes. And what I'd like for you to do, and I know this will take some courage, but we're gonna be brave learners at mobile learning this year. Um, I want you to uh, visit with those at your table, all right? Take, take a look, share with them uh, what, you, what you drew, and talk about the video. What are the things that, that you pulled out of that, um, which some of which would be represented on your, um, on your drawing, and some may not. Talk about what you struggled with. Were there some things that you struggled with this process? What was hard about it? And then we'll, we'll share about that together, okay? So chat, make your tables go. No, no, it's fine. I'll come here. Come on. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't want to keep your part. No, no. It's okay. What did you do? I was just trying to wrap it. So, you know, I've seen professional artists do this. And I really enjoy watching them. Well, that's the way to do it. What did you do? How about that? They try to make this. Had you done this before? No. Okay. How, how did you find this? Yeah. Um, and um, like at first, I is uh, if we're gonna we're gonna kind of debrief something is let's uh, put it on in the background and then um, mute the audio 
And that way we can have that visual you know, coming up as we are talking, but we don't have the audio. And it's just, you know, it's very hard to get a class of students to attend to audio only. I mean, Tony's um, uh, Radio Willowet was some of the first podcasts I ever listened to when he was teaching fifth grade and inspired me so much, and they still do, because it's so great to have kids recording audio and not having all these other distractions, right? Let's just focus on the script, focus on the audio recording. But we are in a very visual era. We're, you know, visually conditioned. So anyway, this is just something that I like. It also kind of will help with time because I don't want to go probably more than eight minutes. And so we'll play this and, and debrief it a little bit, and then uh, we'll kind of move on to the next thing. So I'm just going to play those. Um, who'd like to share? We're not going to make you share your, uh, your pictures, but um, let's talk a little bit about what we drew out. What were some of the things that we drew out of the video that we may or may not have represented on our notes? And then we'll talk a little bit about the notes part. Let's talk about the content part. What do we, what do we draw from the videos? In fact, let's do this with tables. You can nominate. Let me, I'll give you 30 seconds. Okay. Decide who your spokesperson is for your table, okay? You have 30 seconds. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Who's it gonna be? <laughs> I'll speak first. Well, you want to well, okay, I like that. Yeah, no, I do. Right. And then we'll go up here. Okay. We, if we had more time, I would have you make table names and table groups and all this, but you're just the front middle table, so go ahead. All right. So we talked about how um, it's very science-based and it, science takes time and there are variables and conditions. Okay. And so we saw that um, we drew like water from a faucet and a toilet and talked about how it always flows, but we don't exactly know which way until we actually set up variables and conditions. And so you all definitely picked up on, hey, it's not just turn the sink on, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's more to control right, for. There, there are so many factors, right. like, oh, there might be jets in the toilet. And so yeah, a lot of us had the toilet in the sink. Yeah, <laughs> and I was trying to draw a sink. How do I draw a sink? Yeah. And then we had two pools, and I even had um, some colored dye that I like, dropped in. Yeah. And then uh, we mentioned how it's, yeah, it's related to the real world, like with weather and hurricanes and cyclones. So we are taking something like a, an idea like this and applying it there's a lot of complex pieces to this, right? It's one of the reasons I find visual media and videos to be so compelling. There's a lot of complexity of what's going on here, but you're, we're trying to represent it simply. So you definitely took out, you know, the, the weather aspects and the, and the different contexts for this that they were talking about. My one key idea I went back to was motion, not location, because the direction that it's going, it doesn't depend on where they are. And... I had to write that down because I was kind of confused with that as they were going over it, so I put it down as a reminder for me, and um, not the best artist, um, I was the one. But notice things are needed, that's okay, you're good. Okay. <laughs> that's right. Thanks. And just like Tony said in his, in his uh, message a little while ago, you know, creating your own quiz, creating your own <coughs> study guide, I mean, these things deepen your own learning, um, and so, yes, uh, motion, not location, I thought was a, was that was a good way to say that, and probably there's different ways we could think about it, even just visually representing that. You know, that's a nice three-word phrase for representing it, and then how do we visually do that? Let's go to this table here. Who's your um, speaker? You talked about how it was, like, the first thing you said was it was difficult to pay attention and draw. Yeah, absolutely. And so we, the first person said, this is a terrible one, <laughs> because they, they like, could have put so much more into it. So right. We went straight to, how could we just implement this in the classroom? Okay. And I think it, it's important for us to model this, to sort of walk the walk and not just talk the talk. We're taking risks, right? Like you're seeing my sketches, you know, my drawings, and it's not great. I can go in later and, and fix this and polish this and make it better. But yes, it's very hard to do both things. And some of us are not learning this way. Like some of us might not want to do this, this maybe, but, but with others... What's that? I don't think it's that. No, no, I know, but I'm just saying that different, like this will resonate with some people and not and not with others. And some want to just watch and process, and then others there are those people that unless they are doodling or drawing, they're not. Yeah, their brain isn't engaged. Okay, let's go to the back table. It's called slim line. Oh, we kind of said the same thing. It was 
simple to watch and look at our drawing and contemplate the whole um, idea that they were presenting and then put that down and then they were moving on to other ideas. Okay. So we had thought possibly on something like this that was pretty media rich is maybe have the have the students watch it first mm -hmm. and then go back, play it again, and then kind of capture those ideas. Because one of the key points I didn't mention as a tip is to not fall behind. If the video, if the lecture, if the presentation has moved ahead and you're still drawing the sink, <laughs> leave the sink, okay, and move forward to the next thing. Because, again, this isn't about a per drawing a perfect sink, which is, I was actually worried that mine was looking inappropriate. And <laughs> so I got, you know, I panicked and I had to erase it. And so, that, but then I had to just move on. And, and so the, it is hard. Again, this is, it's much more, uh, it's much easier. It's passive. To copy notes here, Roman numeral one, sub point A. Copy this down, right? It doesn't require thinking. It requires just imitation, which that's a part of learning too. And I do learn by taking notes, but it's it's a lot. It's a much higher cognitive demand to say draw an image that makes sense to you of this concept than to say here copy my Roman numeral notes that I've prepared in advance. Yes. How do you respond to the students who are like, well, but, but what's the, wire, the, the, the right way to draw it? I want to draw the right thing. What is your response for that? So as a constructivist, it depends. There are, there's not going to be one way because it's personal. It's about making sense to you. Well, maybe that is the answer. The answer is what makes sense to you. If I'm going to go back and start talking about this, can I talk about the key points? This is the litmus test, you know, of it, are these good? Can I go back and talk about key points and does it make sense to me? So what makes sense it's, what makes sense to me is not necessarily going to make sense to you, and it's going to be very personal. That's another reason I love visual note-taking, is it can help us get in touch with this idea that we learn differently, and that there's not a one-size-fits-all, and that things need to be customized and differentiated. Okay, let's go, yes, one more from this table in the back. Um, one of the things I'm trying to take away from this conference is how do I engage uh, the kids who like to check out? Okay, so we're all at the high school. Right. That, that's when problems start. I'm done. I see this as a great way to work with pairs or teams where it's not threatening. You know, you get the smartest kids, you can't draw the lick, you know, and then you show the smart kids drawing, and, and, and this kid over here goes, I can do better than you than that. So now you're, you, you got them in the game. They're, they're still engaged. Yeah, I used to find this a well, I just shared uh, at our STEM Seeds workshop that, that we did, um, a teacher, I, this was literally a presentation I did three years ago, and she told me, I, she taught ninth grade English. She shared it with all her kids, and she said, after that, about half my kids kept on taking visual notes. I said, yes, I'm so glad you shared that with me. Um, it's not something everybody's going to want to do, but it's something everybody can do, and I love the fact that it can be low tech. You don't need a device. Okay, but if you have a device, and this is where we're going to go next, is let's capture it. Right. Does your device take a picture? Great. Let's take a picture. Could I then add my voice to that picture? Yes, I could. Could I bring it in to explain everything and then start moving and zooming around and, and then narrating over it? Yes, I can. There's a lot of ways that then it could be amplified afterwards. And then that's metacognition. That's reflect, thinking about our thinking. That's reflecting on what we've done. And it can also be teaching. Okay? Because we can have different groups with different concepts, and then we can put those together. And no, it's not going to look like one of these videos, or if you've seen Ted Ed, they're just phenomenal, right? They'll take a teacher's idea and use just the, the most skilled animators to make amazing videos. It's not going to look like that. That's okay. But hopefully what it can do is help us make better sense of the concept. Okay? All right, let's go to this table um, over here last. Um, I mean, kind of the same thing everybody else said. I know my drawing kind of looked like yours, but that was the thing we all talked about was, I know I was drawing, and then I was like, okay, oh, what just happened? Because I was too busy drawing to be paying attention. But I mean, I like the idea. I went to a conference not long ago where the, the presenter said, even if it's you take a note and then go back and have the kids doodle on the side of the page, it kind of triggers something in their brain. So good idea of just, you know, again, not for everybody, I guess. You have to be on top of it, like you said, it's working pretty hard. 
Yeah. You can think of it as a rough draft, and then you see what others have done. Yeah, and then, and then maybe you if you have time to go back. Or even if it's a real short video, maybe watch it once and not draw anything, and then if you have time to watch it again, mm -hmm. you know, so you've gotten like a whole idea of it, and then go back. Right. I don't know if that's actually time, but. <laughs> uh, go ahead. Something I mentioned that it was kind of um, hard to organize things, I actually just kind of, well, at my district we implemented thinking maps, so I drew just like arrows from picture to picture to capture what happened first, what happened next, what I draw. And I've been a huge fan of concept mapping, uh, inspiration software, you know, ways to, to visually, but that also tends to be very linguistic. And we were talking about visuals, and my wife will talk about this too with her third and fourth graders. You know, there's just so much more they have in their brains that they don't, it doesn't come out of their bodies as words or, or fluent sentences, right? And so by allowing this visual representation and then talking about it, and then we can write about it, or, you know, it's just part of the communication process. And in this day where we hopefully are struggling to find ways to use media to more powerfully learn and make, make learning sticky, I love the low tech of this, okay? It's one of the things that appeals to me the most because it's like, put down the iPad, put down the tablet or whatever. Let's just get out pencils and paper. And by the way, when we're done, we can amplify it very powerfully with images, you know, and with audio. But we don't, we don't have to get stuck right away. With, with, with the technology. So let me uh, just say a couple things about, um, in fact, maybe I'll, I'll go ahead just for a second and switch over, switch my connector over here so you can see this on the screen in, in more in, in color. Um, and talk a little bit about this app, Forge, and then we'll go through some slides and talk, talk a little bit about those. So I, um, I guess heard about this kind of thing. Well, there's been multiple people that have kind of shared about it. But um, I think Marco Torres, who's an amazing Apple Distinguished Educator and California uh, teacher, uh, brushes. You know, he's a sketcher, you know, just can draw amazing characters. And he could be like a cartoon artist, you know, at the fair or something. But um, this app is called Forge. And here's the thing that I love the most about it, okay? Pinch to zoom. And I can. Uh, go ahead and tap on my colors and, and select, you know, whatever if I want to go ahead and, and change Australia. I've got my pencil. I can tap here and I can change my width. Um, I, in order to undo, this is key, it's just two fingers down, slide to the left. So I don't like how I just drew that. So I'm just going to drag to the left, stroke undone. Whatever app you use, I think that's an important thing to figure out. What's the undo? And I think having a pinch to zoom is key because I want to be able to get in closely, you know, and be able to, um, you know, make, make more detailed changes. So these are the brushes. This pen um, looks a lot, um, it's just thicker, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know the, the right words for all of those. Um, but there are some other things that, that are more of a brush. But you tap on it to uh, change the width of the brush, like that. If you want that to go away, I can just push up on the top, and that just goes away entirely. And I love being able to pinch to zoom. I can pull that down again. Um, there are palettes that I can pull up and, and select the palette. But then if I want to make a change to any of that, of that color, you know, I can. Um, OK, this isn't a finished, a finished one. But let me just show you one idea. Maybe I will. OK, uh, what's today? Today's the 11th? 11 June, right? Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and claim this. You know, this isn't just magical. Um, you know, this, I, one of the things that is important for our kids, our kids are introduced to new stuff, new things all the time, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we're in our comfort zones and we're not beginners. Do you remember what it was like to learn to skate or to water ski or to snow ski or, you know, to do something new where you didn't have your balance? That could be learning for kids. And so I think it's a good thing for us to do this ourselves, to do this with our kids, uh, and then compare and show. Because what I'm trying to show actually is I'm not very good at drawing, okay? But that's not the point. The point is this is about ideas and it's about learning. So I'm going to tap now. Oh, and by the way, I guess I could bring in another picture. So if I wanted to bring a picture into this, then I could select from my photos we're going to talk about bowling, which we're not going to. Um, okay, we don't want to do that. 
You cannot undo. Oh, come on, don't tell me that. Are you serious? Yeah, they were inside my bowl. Okay. <laughs> wow. Okay. Did I just really do that? Okay, that was like really not a good thing to do. Um, Remove background like the idiot with you. How do you do that? I'm not sure. <laughs> Okay, I do have layers. Oh, you're good. Does this happen to you with your kids? What did I just find out? It came in as a layer, right? And so I should be able to pull down on the layer somehow and drop it. There you go. Very good. This is something else as far as technology. Who? What's the biggest resource we have in our room? The kids, right? And, so, and by the way, you know the failure about? Okay, put your hands over your head right now. Say, woo-hoo, woo-hoo. The failure about is that I'm happy to fail, but it's I'm not going to be defined by failure, and I'm going to learn from my mistake and move on. I mean, that's, that's a powerful thing to teach kids. Okay, so here I am with my finished uh, little drawing. What I want to do now is, um, is share it. And so I've got, uh, I've heard it called the share square. My friend Gail Lovely calls it the share square. So I'm going to click on the share square and then tap what I would like to export. And I can do PDF or, or PNG. I'll choose PNG, and I'm just going to choose Save Image. So this is now being saved to my camera roll. And once it's on my camera roll, then I could email it. Um, one of the, the good things about, for instance, a blogger site is, and this this has this it's a PNG that has a transparent background, so it'll it'll look. Uh, Maybe somebody works out here who really knows how to, how to, it'll look okay when I bring it in to explain everything or something like that, but it's just transparent. Um, I can again click on the share box and I can email it. If I had a blogger site, there's an email address that I can have the kids email their, their uh, pictures to me, and then they come in as draft posts that I can approve. Or there's other ways. You might use Google Classroom or Edmodo, or there's different, different ways. Here's kind of where I've taken this up a notch, and it's uh, kind of like a whiteboard animation. If you use Procreate, which is a $6 app, it'll create a video showing all the steps of you drawing it. And you can drop that video right into iMovie and then narrate over the top of it. But if I'm doing this in my classroom, we're not buying Procreate. So I can open up Explain Everything, start a new project. I can bring in the picture, the, the existing photo that I just saved. I can find my photo roll, camera roll, yes, there it is. Okay, and so here's my camera roll. All right, I'm just gonna bring the whole thing in, and now I'm gonna narrate this, and I'll talk about what I took from this. Hi, this is Wes Fryer, and it's June 11th, 2015, and we're learning about the Coriolis effect, and there were these awesome videos, one uh, created in the Northern Hemisphere in Alabama, and one in Australia, and it was uh, pointing out how, through an experiment, we could see the Coriolis effect in action. And so one of the most important things I learned was that you get inconsistent results when you just look at a toilet or a sink uh, in terms of the direction of the swirl. And they had a very uh, pretty controlled um, experiment using kiddie pools. And with, with uh, food coloring, they showed how the flow is counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere, or sorry, it is clockwise in the southern hemisphere, and it's counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere. Uh, so those are a couple things I took away. All right, stop. So I can now uh, share this. So I can say, save this out, and I can just save this movie to my camera roll, depending upon how fast my, uh, my iPad is, how new it is, and, and how many you know, moves and stuff like that that I have when I was doing this recording is going to depend upon how quick this exports. But then that video can be shared on our Classroom YouTube channel. And it, it, I, I think this is a really good strategy. This, now, this amps it up quite a bit, right? You don't need to go to this. Um, there is an app called Video Scribe, which used to be affordable and now is not. <laughs> and it lets you uh, just grab drawings that other people have made, and you basically make a storyboard. And so you, with your script, can well, read your script, and then you pull in the things that you'd like to have drawn. If you've seen RSA animes like Dan Pink and Sir Ken Robinson's speeches, they, they have amazing graphic facilitators who've drawn those. It's, this isn't that fancy, but now on my photo roll, if I open it up, I've got a video that I can play. Hmm. This is Wes Fryer, and 
we were on 2015 and we were learning about the Coriolis effect, and there were these awesome videos, one uh, created in the Northern Hemisphere in Alabama and one in Australia, and it was, it was uh, pointing out how, through an experiment, we could see the Coriolis effect in action. And so one of the most important things I learned was that you get inconsistent results when you just look at a toilet or a sink uh, in terms of the direction of the swirl. And they had a very uh, pretty controlled uh, experiment using kiddie pools and with, with uh, food coloring. They showed how the flow is counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere, or sorry, it's clockwise. Hey, what's going to happen as your students create media like this, talk about it at their tables, and then record a synthesis of that? What, what's going to happen? They're going to learn it. It's going to become stickier. It's going to be. It's going to be deeper. And so I just I love visual note taking. Again, not because I'm really good at it. It's something we can all do. It's a quick victory. You can do this today with the sessions you're going to. In fact, I challenge you to do that. And you can do it tomorrow or the next day that you have students. No matter whether you teach kindergarten or you teach 12th grade or graduate students. All right. So, um, we're not going to take a ton of time, but I have about five minutes left, and I'll go through some of these slides. Sometimes I'm more slide-focused. Today I want to be just kind of more hands-on. Um, anybody seen this before? Know what this is? Newspaper Rock in Utah? Thousands and thousands of years old, right? From Anasazi and other cultures. Wouldn't you love to know who this guy is? Yeah. Yeah, right? Like ancient aliens probably talk about, ooh, this is Jonas. We don't know, right? We don't have words that go with it. People say... Pictures are worth a thousand words. Okay, but put the words with it, right? But even the visuals. We've been doing this for years, but now our tools are so much more powerful. Unfortunately, in traditional education, a lot of times we're, we're not doing this, right? We're just, we're, we're so biased towards the linguistic, towards the written, but we cast aside the visual. And wait a minute, how does my brain work? You know, Bernie Dodge called me on the carpet on Twitter a few years ago when I was quoting someone else about uh, neurons and ears and eyes. And so this is the way I'll say it, which he said, which is okay. There are hundreds of neurons that connect your ear to your brain. How about the eye? Thousands, okay? I can't give you a specific number. 300 times, you process 300 times. Can't say that. But we can say hundreds of neurons, ear to brain, thousands, eye to brain. Okay, you wanna tap into brain learning, let's get visual, okay? So there was a great article in the February 2014 edition of National Geographic, and it made me think about sticky learning. Okay? How do we help learning get sticky? Learning that persists. Um, our brains are wired for visuals. They're wired for stories. So we need to use those as we teach and as we learn. Um, what are we going to create today? In fact, let's say that together in blue. Ready? Go. What will we create today? That's a great thing for your kids to ask. What are we going to make? What are we going to do? Because if we can create something that may be media-based or may not, there's a much higher chance that we're going to retain. Because Bloom's taxonomy in the 2001 revision says creation is at the top. And we can actually require and make students, or you know, encourage, I guess you can't make them, but we're going to encourage them to do higher order thinking, not just the lower level knowledge and comprehension stuff. So visual note-taking is here on the Show With Media site. Um, Rock Our World is the Twitter handle for Carol Ann McGuire, a fantastic visual note taker, far more talented and skilled in, in terms of her, her drawings than I am, but she has a great um, set on Flickr of lots of different things. She also does sermon notes, but she does a lot of educational technology presentations, and so she uses the hashtag sketchnote. That's another way to find sketchnoters. Good notes probably look kind of like this, right? Roman numeral one, subpoint A. I will not today play this, but my favorite TED Talk of all time. Okay, let me say that again. My favorite TED Talk of all time. If you can find out what somebody's favorite TED Talk is, and they've seen a bunch, you know, watch, watch it. Um, Rachel Smith, this is actually a TEDx. It's called Drawing in Class. And Rachel tells the story of being that kid in the back of the room who was always doodling, and who the teachers always said, Rachel, you're really smart. But if you don't start paying attention and taking notes the way I tell you to, you're never going to be successful. Do you know what Rachel does professionally today? She's a graphic facilitator. And businesses and conferences pay her to come, sometimes on butcher paper on the wall, sometimes with an iPad, make the thinking of the group visible. Awesome. You can do the same thing in your classroom, and I've tried it before too. Having somebody at the whiteboard drawing and taking turns 
visually represented. What are we learning about? What are we talking? So we've already practiced visual note taking today. Here's a little bit about what visual note taking is not and is. We've already talked about this a little bit. It's not a test of your drawing skills. It's not easy. It's not just for primary kids. Okay, so high school, yes, we can do it, right? We can do this with graduate students. Um, it is a challenging process of making meaning. And if you already are a constructivist, this will fit right in. If you're more of a behaviorist, you might be thinking, I don't know. I don't know, Wes. Try it. Okay? Try it yourself. And also, invite your students to try it and then listen to their feedback as they talk about whether or not it helps them learn. It helps them make sense of the content. It's a lot like language translation. I don't... I can only pretty much say I love you in sign language, right? <laughs> but if I'm translating to Spanish, it's a very active process for me. It doesn't come natural, so it requires a lot of cognitive processing. It's personal, okay? This is my Stephen Johnson notes from ISTE a couple years ago. His book, Where Good Ideas Come From, talked about how, about the time of the 1700s and the Enlightenment, in Europe, they moved from beer to coffee. They started hanging out in coffee shops. I mean, beer is a depressant. Coffee is a stimulant. You know, the commonplace book, that, that's the worst ever note Elsa, by the way, that you'll ever see drawn. But it, they said that was a key thing for uh, writers and authors like um, Tolkien and like uh, Narnia C.S. Lewis, you know, was having places to get together, drink some coffee, and then they recorded all their ideas. So where are we putting our ideas? Anyway, you didn't need to make sense of that because those weren't your notes. They're my notes, and I can go back and tell you about them because it was an effective way to remember. And again, I drew in dark in black, and I put in and, and shaded later. So if you use an app that uses layers, that's a good thing because you can draw in black and then go in behind with color. Uh, whiteboard animation, I won't show you those, but video scribe is now very expensive, but it's a way that you can create some of those. Um, I have an example of one that I've done. Last thing, tips. I've already said some of these. Use a familiar medium, especially when you're getting started. Because if you use an unfamiliar app, you're going to be concerned about the app rather than the ideas. Um, I already showed you these um, suggestions. Forge is my favorite free iPad app. Procreate is my favorite overall app, but it is about $6. Um, stay with the speaker. Don't fall behind. Okay? If, if you're still drawing the sink and the you know, videos have moved on, just leave the sink. You can go back and fix it later. Draw with a thin black line first, shade in and color later. Um, you can consider different styluses. Um, styluses can help, uh, but you don't have to. Most of all, be brave, okay? Be kind, be patient with yourself, with yourself, because most of us are conditioned to say, I don't draw, okay? I, I don't do that. And most kids get that way quickly you know, as they move up into upper elementary and middle school, so. Get messy, embrace the opportunity to feel uncomfortable as a learner. Uh, create opportunities for your students to learn and practice. Those are some of my kids did um, two years ago. Uh, walk the walk. I, I have chances to do sermon, uh, listen to sermons and stuff like that at church. You need a sandbox. We can play with these tools in order to learn how to do them, and that's going to make uh, learning stickier for us. All right. What can the tablet, what can YouTube do for our sticky learning? It can really energize it. And... Uh, I encourage you to share what you've learned as you continue. But it's one of my top three apps if you're going to buy anything on the iPad. Book Creator. I'm moving out some screen with it. Book Creator, which my wife and I will talk about in the next session. It's on um, iPad videos and books, and ebooks in Canyon and Canyon. And it's right out there. Is Canyon upstairs? Maybe? Okay, great.